Thank you so much for watching Landom Sea Goes There. Please subscribe and hit the like button and the bell notification button. The 1971 release of the coming-of-age drama film called The Last Picture Show set the big screen on fire. It was directed and co-written by Peter Bogdanovich. It was adapted from a 1966 novel with the same name by Larry McMurtry. The movie's ensemble cast includes Timothy Bottoms, Jeff Bridges, Ellen Burstyn, Ben Johnson, Cloris Leachman, and Sybil Shepherd. The storyline goes that high school seniors and best friends, Sonny and Dwayne, live in a dying Texas town. The handsome Dwayne is dating local beauty, J.C., while Sonny is having an affair with the coach's wife, Ruth. As graduation nears, both boys contemplate their futures. While Dwayne eyes the army and Sonny takes over a local business, each boy struggles to figure out if he can escape this dead-end town and build a better life somewhere else. It had its theatrical release on October 22, 1971, and in doing so, it was a critical and commercial success, grossing about $29 million on a small budget of only $1.3 million. It was nominated for eight Academy Awards, including Best Picture, Best Director, Best Supporting Actor for Johnson and Bridges, and Best Supporting Actress for Burston and Leachman, with Ben Johnson and Cloris Leachman actually winning. Peter Bogdanovich, the director, at the time was a 31-year-old stage actor, critic, and had only directed one other film. One day, while standing in a cashier line at a drugstore, he happened to look at the rack of paperbacks sitting next to him, and his eye fell on an interesting title, The Last Picture Show. The back of the book said it was about kids growing up in Texas. He decided that it probably wasn't of interest to him, and he put it back in the rack. A few weeks later, actor Sal Minio gave Bogdanovich's wife, Polly Platt, a copy of the book, and he recommended to Platt and Bogdanovich that they should make it into a film. After discussing the proposed project with Orson Welles, who was his house guest at the time, Bogdanovich agreed with him that shooting the film in black and white would work wonders to convey what they were wanting to achieve. At that time, it was a pretty unusual choice. The movie was shot in Larry McMurtry's small hometown of Archer City, located in north-central Texas near the Oklahoma state line. In his book, he renamed that town Thalia, and Bogdanovich renamed it Anna Ring. The similarity to the famed cow town of Abilene, Kansas, in Howard Hawks' Red River from 1948 was all done intentionally. Red River again is tied into the last picture show when Sonny and Dwayne watch it at the end of the film. After shooting wrapped, the director went back to L.A. to edit the footage. He states that he edited the entire film himself, but refused to credit himself, stating that being the director and co-writer was plenty. When he was informed that the Motion Pictures Editor Guild required an editor to be credited, he suggested Don Cambert, who had been editing another film in the next office over, and had helped Bogdanovich with a few parts of the film. The consensus for the film after the first edit was that they thought it was going to be great, but it still needed some additional editing to achieve its full potential. Camburn was then asked by Bogdanovich to make some significant contributions to the film's edit in its final form. Now, Ben Johnson just leaps off the screen in his portrayal, but at 9 minutes and 54 seconds of actual screen time, it's the shortest performance ever to win an Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor. The director, Bogdanovich, had originally offered the role that Ben Johnson had of Sam the Lion to James Stewart, who liked the part, but he had already committed to a TV series 
that he couldn't get out of. Cloris Leachman's last scene in the movie was printed on the first take without any previous rehearsals. She wanted to rehearse the scene, but the director thought that it would ruin the scene if she had rehearsed it. After she completed the take, she turned to Bogdanovich and said, I can do that better. And he told her, no, you can't. You just won an Oscar. Ultimately, his sense of direction paid off, as Leachman did go on to win that Academy Award for her performance. Sybil Shepard and Bogdanovich became lovers during the production of this film. At the time, he was married with children to the film's production designer, Polly Platt. And this action broke up his family. He went on to do four other movies with her, including Texasville from 1990 and Daisy Miller from 1974. Bogdanovich always claimed that the crew disliked him because he always ate with the actors on location. He said that he wanted to mold their performance without outside influences. He reportedly fired a crew member one day when he told Sybil Shepard that she should smile more in the film. Ben Johnson almost didn't accept this role. As a matter of fact, he probably wouldn't have taken it if it hadn't have been for his friend, John Ford. Johnson turned down the part three times, telling director Bogdanovich, that the part had too many words in it. But his friend, director Ford, persuaded him by asking if he only wanted to be playing John Wayne's sidekick for the rest of his career. When Sybil Shepard filmed her famous nude scene at the indoor swimming pool, the rest of the cast were not actually in front of her. They were filmed separately, and only the cameraman, sound man, and the director were present at the time. Sybil was cast in this part with the option of backing out of these nude scenes if she so desired. She only agreed to do them after asking the opinions of the three female co-stars, who all told her that she should do it. When the film was scheduled for a re-release years later, Shepard asked the famed director to put footage back in of her being topless that had originally been cut from the film. She thought her breasts looked great back then and wanted them to be visible. Years after the movie came out, Shepard sued Playboy when they printed these unauthorized photos of her topless, which Bogdanovich had cut from the film. Initially, she was furious over it, but as time has gone on, she seems to be somewhat proud of the photos now. Go back and watch this classic Bogdanovich film. It's a great one. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll continue to chase the classics.